a Belgian military base in the heart of Europe. Before taking off on a mission, a military plane fills up with fuel. Like the rest of the NATO air fleet based on the European continent, this aircraft can rely on an exceptional, efficient and safe logistical tool, the NATO pipeline network. The NATO pipelines in Europe are an infrastructure of 10 distinct networks, the largest of which is the Central European Pipeline System, or CEPS, consisting of 5,200 kilometers of pipeline fed by 13 supply points. Six of these are located in seaports. Le Havre, Europe's biggest terminal for oil tankers from the Atlantic. Here, the Compagnie Industrielle Maritime manages the offloading, storage and distribution of the fuel a job that requires high-precision work from SIM sales director Gildas Beauchene. SIM operates constantly, around the clock, seven days a week, whenever the tankers dock. The vessel connects to the Le Havre terminal and vice versa using the offloading arms you see behind me. Once this connection is secure, commercial pumping operations can begin. Depending on the power of the ship's pumps, the jet fuel in its tanks will be pumped to SIMS facilities at flow rates that may reach 5,000 cubic meters per hour for certain loads. Sometimes it takes up to one day to empty an oil tanker's hold. Next, the petroleum fuels are stored and inspected. Once all the product safety and quality standards have been verified, fuel distribution pumping can begin. These operations cause movement in the lines you see here, sending the fuel to the junction point between the SIM facilities and the 5,200 kilometer SEP system operated by NATO in Europe. Some of the petroleum products distributed by the NATO pipeline therefore come ashore in Normandy. Normandy was in fact the birthplace of the NATO pipeline, one fine summer in 1944, at the time of the most famous landing in history. British scientists and engineers conceived Operation Pluto, a masterpiece of military engineering. A gigantic pipeline was laid across the English Channel. The first section between the Isle of Wight and Cherbourg was 130 kilometers long. Connected to pumping stations on the English coast, Operation Pluto pipelines supported the Allied offensive as it advanced, supplying fuel for troop transport vehicles, tanks and aircraft. The NATO pipeline, successor to Pluto, was developed at the height of the Cold War. Today, the Central Europe pipeline system, or CEPS, guarantees energy security and fuel supplies throughout Europe. This system conveys over 13 million cubic meters of fuel per year across five countries, connecting 34 military depots capable of storing over a million cubic meters of fuel. Like all the depots, the NATO military fuel terminal at Brussels Airport in Belgium is underground. The pipeline from the port of Antwerp runs at a depth of one meter, safe from accidental damage and terrorist attack. It delivers to a reinforced concrete fuel store. Europe thus has a secure fuel distribution system that is continually monitored and maintained. The military have top priority, but in peacetime, they use less than 10% of the fuel supply. In a crisis, however, the reverse is true. In 1999, during the war in Kosovo, the NATO pipeline system mobilized all its capabilities to maintain fuel supplies for the intense air campaign NATO was waging. The supply chain was up and running in less than 24 hours. A real logistical feat. SEPMA, a NATO agency dedicated to managing the SEPs, is in charge of this strategic system. Every three months, representatives from all the countries concerned meet to plan pipeline business and development under the leadership of SEPMA traffic chief Robert Goyens. Uh, 
de ces réunions et assurer... The goal of these meetings is to ensure our customers' energy supply on an ongoing basis. Nos clients, qui sont des clients militaires, notamment à Ramstein, où les Américains... Military customers, especially at Ramstein, where the Americans take a lot of fuel products for their operations in Afghanistan, and also civilian customers at Schiphol, Frankfurt, Findel, and Brussels, to meet their daily needs. The system is managed in real time by each host country. In Belgium, the Belgian pipeline organization monitors 800 kilometers of pipe and 14 pumping stations from its control room in Louvain. Captain Vermeulen is at the controls. On tourne à du 330 mètres cubeurs. We currently pump at 330 cubic meters per hour, and we're going up to 400, the equivalent of 12 trucks. The tanker trucks you see on the highway contain 30 cubic meters of fuel. That means that with four lines, in a split second, we can replace 50 trucks per hour. If you total it up, considering that we pump fuel 24-7, 365 days a year, if we weren't here, there would be constant traffic jams on Belgian highways. Non-stop. 90% of the SEPS fuels are earmarked for the fuel farms of civilian customers of NATO, like the airports in Amsterdam, Frankfurt and Brussels. At Brussels airport, the civilian depot is right alongside the military one. Since 1993, the NATO pipeline has been the airport's sole supplier. As you can see here, the military facilities are right next door. The pipeline runs underground, of course, all the way to our meter in our facilities. It's a great asset to the airport. On the one hand, it gives us additional flexibility. On the other, it certainly increases safety. And it's much less harmful to the environment. At Brussels International Airport, the 350 jets flying in and out every day are all refueled by the SEPs. This reliable and constant refueling system is supervised by Dominique Duchesne, a manager of hydrant refueling system. This is the end of our line where the jet fuel is finally pumped all the way to the plane. HRS delivers the fuel to the airport apron, then the plane fueling company takes over. In this case, Sky Tanking is handling the task and is busy refueling a Brussels Airlines jet. Thanks to the aviation fuel SEPS transports, every year over 18 million passengers fly out of Brussels. And the network is still growing. There are plans to connect the fuel terminal in Fosse-sur-Mer to airports in Lyon and Eindhoven. <laughs> 